الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله ورسوله ارسله وقوه بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله فبلغ الرساله وادى الامان ونصح للامه وجاهد في سبيلي حتى اتاه اليقين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الا وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يقول الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وصف القائلين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون. I bear witness that there is none worthy of our worship except Allah سبحانه وتعالى and I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم peace be upon him is the seal of the prophets and the final messenger to all of humanity. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, there is none to misguide. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray, there is none to guide the right. Takalabna fi al-khutab al-madiya an da'wa al-ta'amun wa ta'alum min makhlukat Allah ta'ala min basharin wa haywan wa tayrin ila ghayri dhalik. Wa yom inshallah نكمل حديثنا عن صورة للنحل وغيرها من الصور فيما يتعلق بصفات الله actually في صفات الإنسان في القرآن منهم المؤمن ومنهم الكافر فالله سبحانه وتعالى يتكلم عن الصنفين فهو قد خلق الإنسان ضعيف وميزه بأمرين ميزه بأن رزقه العقل وحرية الاختيار ورزقه بالتسخير المخلوقات له وطلب منه امرين، طلب منه اخلاص العباده لله سبحانه وتعالى، وطلب منه التوكل على الله سبحانه وتعالى، وهذا هو كل المطلوب، كما سنرى من الايات والاحاديث، اما اذا اختل الشرطين او الشرطان فيصدق على الانسان الصفات الوارده في القران، ان الانسان خلق هدوعا، وكان الانسان عجولا، قال وكان الانسان قتورا. إن الإنسان لا يطغى أن رآه استغنى، وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا، كما يخبرنا القرآن عن صفات الإنسان. So today, إن شاء الله, over the past few weeks, we have been talking about what we can learn from everything around us, to look around and, and learn from other human beings, and also from animals and birds, from children, from everyone. There is something you can learn from everyone and everything around you, as we gave a lot of examples from the Quran and from the Sunnah of the Prophet. Today, inshallah, we'll talk about some of the qualities given in the Qur'an, some of our qualities. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ فَمِنْكُمْ كَافِرٌ وَمِنْكُمْ مُؤْمِنٌ Allah created us. Some of us are kuffar and some of us are believers, uh, as far as human beings are concerned. So you have to start this story from the beginning to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes us in the Qur'an, those who believe and those who disbelieve. To see what it requires us, our job in this world, and where we do good and where we go wrong. We start from the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُولِ Human beings are created weak, in a state of weakness. We are told in the Quran in Surah Tuhud, وَمَا مِن Some kind of intelligence, but 
But they are not as sophisticated, they are not as intelligent as we are. Because we are the Khulafa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. And we'll come to this at the, at the end. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahr, وَاللَّهُ أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِنْ بُطُونِ أُمَّاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا لا تعلمون شيئا وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة قليلا ما تشكرون. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you forth out of the wounds of your mothers. You are not knowing anything. Then He gave you here sight وأفئدة intellect. So the word for Ad in the Quran most of the time it means intellect. But you hardly give any thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says it in the Quran. Yes, he gave sight to animals and birds and the rest of the creation. He gave them hearing. But he made you special. He gave you intellect. Which is something that he didn't give anyone else. Then you see something interesting in Surah Al-Nahr. وَمِن ثَمَرَاتِ النَّخِيلِ وَالْأَعْنَابِ تَتَّخِذُونَ مِنْهُ سَكَرًا Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the brains, the intelligence. So you can have free choice to serve him. Then what do you do with this intellect? Some human beings, as Allah says in the Quran, they create wine or alcohol just so they can't think clearly. So they abuse the ability that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given them to serve him. Okay, so this is one type of people. As we said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you and He has given you two things so you will be able to do your job. The first one, He has given you the intellect, the intelligence, the free choice, the ability to serve Him. And number two, He has subjected everything in this world or most of the things for your service. Say for example, the sun is there to give you light. Then you have the moon and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subjected for you the animals and the birds. As you can see from Surah Al-Nahm, Surah Al-Nahm. He has subjected for you animals so you can eat from them, meat. And he says, And he gives you milk from between digested matter and blood. He gives you milk to drink. Then when he talks about the Nahm, the bees, he says, I give you from the bees, I give you honey. Then from animals, I give you meat. Then from the sea I give you meat and I give you the pearl. So everything in the universe or most of the things are created for your service. Musakharat. For your service so you can do your job. So everything is here for your benefit as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. We as human beings, we don't like eggs like chicken. We don't give milk like animals to the rest. We don't provide meat or food for anything else. We are probably the only consuming creature on earth. We don't benefit anyone else, but we live and feed with everything else, right? Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjected most of things in this world for us. Especially the big things like the sun, the moon, the stars, and you can look, for example, at the cow or the buffalo or the elephant, but he has not subjected for us mosquitoes, for example. Why? To show you that this is not because of you. You are not the one who subjected them. If you want to, uh, if you want to prove that you are the one who subjected the sun, the moon, and the big animals, prove to me that you are able to subject the mosquito. You can't. So this is just like a proof for you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is the one who subjected all these things for you. So two things, the intelligence and he subjected everything for you or most of the things for you, serves. And he wants two things from you as explained in the Quran. Number one, ikhlasul ibadati lahu, that you serve him alone, that you worship him alone. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created human beings and jinn except to serve and worship me. So this is your job in, in this world, to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Him. commanded all human beings from the time of Adam all the way to Muhammad to do one thing. 
وما أمر إلا ليعبد الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء. They have been commanded to all to do one thing: to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala sincerely, purely for His sake. They don't show off. They don't do things to please people. That's your job. Just to do things purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And to do this, they have to do another thing. They have to put their trust on Him. Why? Because He is the only one. Who's, who's helping them and providing for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even is telling the Prophet sallallahu in the Quran, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاصْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقًا نَحْنُ نَغْزُقُكَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling even the Prophet sallallahu in the Quran, urge your people to pray. You are not providing for them. You are not even providing for yourself. I'm the only one who's providing for you and, and all of them. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider. Right? So He's telling us in the Quran, put your trust in me. There is a beautiful ayah in the Quran, in Surah al rum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He talks about animals in terms of tawakkul, then He talks about human beings. Through haram ways, the wrong ways. 
Because it is coming to you anyway. So you have two options. Either to take what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you in a halal way, or you can take it in a haram way. And we give a story in Ramadan to explain this meaning. It's one of the most beautiful stories I read. It's about Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. It said that one day he was traveling with his, uh, with his assistant and they, it seems that they missed Salah or something. They went after Salah. So he went to the masjid and he told his assistant, okay, we're going to go inside and, and pray. So we're going to leave my horse outside. And the horse had a beautiful uh, saddle, Serge, on the back of the horse. So he found a man uh, lingering in, outside the masjid, sitting outside the masjid. So he said, would you please keep an eye on my horse and tell me and my assistant we pray and come out? He said, yeah, no problem. Just, you know, go pray and come back. No problem. So they spent about 10, 15 minutes. They prayed. And on the way out, Ali ibn Abi Talib was thinking, maybe I can give him 10 bucks or something, 10 dinars for his service, you know, to honor him because he kept an eye on my horse for 10, 10 minutes or something. He came out. The horse was there. But the man was not there, and the search, the saddle on the back of the horse, the beautiful thing on the back of the horse was gone. Nowhere to be found. So what happened? The man stole the saddle and he ran away to the market to sell it. So Ali ibn Abi Talib told his assistant, would you please go to the market and buy us a saddle so we can use the horse? So the assistant went to the market and sure enough he found the man who stole the saddle standing in the market and selling the saddle for ten dollars. The exact same amount that Imam Ali was going to give him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving the man the risk in a halal way, but he was in a rush and he wanted to take it in a haram way. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> We said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for two reasons. Number one, to serve Him sincerely, purely, for His sake, and to put our trust in Him. If these conditions are not met, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who don't meet the conditions. And there are some qualities that are given for them in the Quran. One of them, Human beings are created in haste. The human beings are made of haste. So they are so hasty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is as if they were created from haste itself. Why? Because they are always rushing. They want to take things in a haram way. They do. It doesn't matter what you're getting the money in halal or haram, it doesn't matter. What matters is, I want this and I want it now. Some people, they try to be rich very fast, so they go to drugs, they do certain things. They don't matter if it's haram or halal. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, some, some human beings, they are hasty. They are always rushing. They don't wait. They only wait and they are lazy if it is time to do something good, if it is time to make salah. You got two or three more hours, man, we can, we can wait. Wake up for Fajr, no, no, no. You still have like an hour and a half before uh, sunrise. They, they end up praying like five minutes before the right? So this is what human beings do. One of the qualities of human beings, إن الإنسان خلق هلوعا إذا مسه الشر جزوعا وإذا مسه الخير منوعا إلا المصلين. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'arij that human beings, are created impatient. They have no patience. If something bad happens to them, they lose hope. They become so desperate and they blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their own faults. If something good happens to them, they turn their back to Allah and they never say thank you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, except al musallun the people who pray. The people who pray. So this is the exception. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that human beings are qatura. qatura. Human beings are stingy. They don't, they don't want to give anyone anything. They want to keep things for themselves. And this beautiful ayah in Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
إذا أمسكتم خشية الإنفاق وكان الإنسان قتورا. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us human beings the treasuries of everything in this world. So say for example uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given some of us uh, control over air for example, air, the air we breathe. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you would have withheld the treasures of Allah, you don't like to share anything with anyone because human beings are created stingy, we don't like to share. Now imagine if some of us, a human being or a country, they have control over the air for example, and they are not happy with you, can you imagine, they will just withhold the air and you will die innocently. Or they will raise the prices, if you are not able to pay at the end of the month, you know Mr. Ibrahim, we are sorry but you didn't pay your bill for two months, we are sorry, we'll have to cut you off. You can't breathe and you will die. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't do this because He knows that human beings are stingy. And He says He will withhold because you think that the treasuries of Allah will run out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also one of the qualities of human beings إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَىٰ أَرْرَآهُ سَلَمْ This is what Allah says in Surah Iqra, Surah Al-Arab. Human beings, once they feel that they don't need anything from anyone, they become tyrants and they just abuse and oppress people. They turn their backs to Allah and they just oppress people. Because they have a lot of money, because they have a good education, because they have a good health and so on and so forth, they just turn their backs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring them back? He will take something from them. You will lose someone, you will lose your job, you will lose your health. Now you go back to Allah and cry, Ya Allah, give me this, give me that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. He knows you because He is the one who created you. The last quality for today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا One of the qualities of human beings, and this is something you cannot see anywhere, Human beings, they debate and they argue with Allah more than anything else. And as a matter of fact, that they are the only ones who do this. I created you, worship me, no thank you. I provide for you, so thank me, no thank you. Right? Allah doesn't even exist. This is what a lot of you, one billion people, they don't, in this world, one out of seven people in this world, they don't even believe that Allah exists. About 2.5 billion, like more than one third of them, they thank another human being and they think he created them and he provides for them. One billion, they worship animals and some worship mice and the stones and the fire. And the, who is left? Very few of my servants are thankful to me. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Would you pray? Fast in Ramadan, give salakah. I don't have to do all of this, man, because I have a pure heart. They debate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who close their eyes and say, well, just like on a sunny day, some people will just close their eyes and say, well, the sun doesn't exist. All you need to do is just open your eyes. So people will just debate and argue about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they don't want to do the job, which is to worship Him alone serve Him sincerely for His sake and put their trust in Him. They just play games. And some of them even say, well, I just live this life whatever I want. Five minutes before I die, I will make tawbah, I will ask Allah to forgive me, I will go for Umrah or Hajj, you know, and Allah is Kareem and all these things, right? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا If you are expecting or if you have hope in meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and meeting His reward in Akhirah, then do your job, which is do good deeds. Worship Him alone and be a good person. And this is the essence of Islam. That's uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 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 ولا غالبا إلا خصمت وفر لهم المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات رحمتك يا رحمة الرحيم وأسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى to give us sincerity in everything we say and do we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to give us the best in this life and the best in the life to come and we ask him سبحانه وتعالى to forgive our sins and accept our good deeds
صلى اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين، اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى اله ابراهيم، انك حميد مجيد، وبارك على محمد وعلى اله محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى اله ابراهيم، انك حميد مجيد واقم الصلاه.